An amazing new MIDI guitar VST plugin has recently been released by a company called Jam Origin. It converts the audio output from your guitar in real time, allowing you to trigger virtual instruments and even record the parts as MIDI. This tutorial will give you an overview of the plugin, plus I will show you how to set it up in Samplitude Pro X. If you're a Sequoia user, the same method will apply. If you don't have the plugin, you can download the demo from the Jam Origin website. Here's the link. Although it's still a beta version, the plugin is well worth checking out, and I think you will be pleasantly surprised by how well it performs, even at this early stage of development. Jam Origin MIDI Guitar comes in two versions, as a standalone desktop application and as a VST plugin version. You have a choice of using either 32 bit or 64 bit versions. I'm going to concentrate on using the VST plugin version, so you will need to install the appropriate VST version which is compatible with your operating system. I'm running Windows 8 Pro x64 and Samplitude Pro X x64. So I have placed the MIDI Guitar 64 DLL in my VST plugins folder. If you find the plugin is not showing up in your VST plugin list, try the following. Open Samplitude Pro X and press Y to open the system options. Then go to the effects tab and select VST DirectX Rewire. Click on the folder icon and choose Rescan Selected VST Folder. This will make sure it appears in the plugin list. Click OK to exit the window. Before opening the plugin, you need to choose the correct input of your audio interface. As it's a mono signal, I'm enabling the mono button in the track editor. Then I'm right clicking on the record enable button and choosing input 2, which is the guitar input. To achieve the best playing response when using this plugin, it's a good idea to aim for a reasonably low latency. Press Y again to open the system options and adjust the latency from there by clicking on the control panel. This will bring up the relevant control panel for your audio interface and you can make adjustments from there. I've set mine to 256 samples. Although how low you can go will depend on the size of the project and how many plugins you are already running. Also, under monitoring setup, move the fader to the far right to enable MixFX monitoring hybrid engine. This is the best setting to obtain a low latency response of live inputs. I also have the monitoring behavior set to tape monitoring. Plus, I always tick the mix input and playback checkbox. Click OK to close the dialog. It's important to have a clean guitar signal, so avoid putting it through any heavily affected guitar emulations or distortion pedals. Make sure you have track monitoring enabled and check you have a signal. Now click on the plugin slot and navigate to the VSTFX menu to open the MIDI guitar plugin. I have created a folder called Jam Origin, so I'm selecting from within that folder MIDI Guitar 64. We are now looking at the MIDI Guitar plugin interface, which is very straightforward and user friendly. Now, when I play my guitar, it triggers the default test piano sound. You can turn the test piano off by opening the left click context menu and selecting no instrument. The next part is important. Go to the top left of the MIDI guitar GUI and click on the plugin menu. Now make sure that VST MIDI out is ticked. I'm now selecting the track below which has the Tone 2 Saurus VSTi already loaded. I need to connect the output from the MIDI guitar plugin to the input of the VSTi. To do this, go to the MIDI panel and click on the input slot and choose VST MIDI out recording. Make sure you have track monitoring enabled for both the MIDI guitar plugin and the VSTi. 
Now when the guitar is played, the MIDI guitar plugin converts the audio signal so it triggers the synthesizer. Now that the link between the MIDI guitar plugin and Tone 2 Source has been created, it should now be possible to record a MIDI part. To do this, make sure you have monitoring enabled for both the MIDI guitar plugin and the VSTi. Also, make sure monitoring is enabled on the transport. I've set the metronome for a one bar counting. Finally, record enable the VSTi track. So we are now ready to record a MIDI take. Take it away, John. Next, I want to record a lead synth part using a second instance of Tone 2 Saurus. If you're going to trigger a second VSTi, it's important to turn off MIDI monitoring for the first VSTi. Plus, you will also need to enable VST MIDI Out Recording for the new VSTi. Do this from the MIDI Out drop down menu. So, I'm record enabling the new MIDI track along with track monitoring. This beta version of the MIDI guitar plugin also has experimental pitch bend support, so I'm going to set it at two semitones. Click the right arrow twice to do this. This means that any pitch bend will be recorded as part of the sequence. I'm now ready to record a new MIDI take using the lead synth sound. Now if I open the MIDI editor, you can see the pitch bend has been recorded. If you find your guitar isn't triggering the VST synthesizer correctly, try adjusting the sensitivity response fader. This will affect the input sensitivity of your guitar. Notice that when I adjust the sensitivity, the height of the waveform visualization also changes. You can also quickly transpose the signal by using the octave shift preset buttons. You can also monitor the original guitar input. Left click where it says Output Type and choose Direct Output. You will now hear the original guitar signal combined with the synthesizer. If you decide you want to record both signals, simply record enable the audio track and the MIDI track and begin recording. <laughs> 